You're watching Reality Check. The jury may still be out on the Modi government's record of handling the economy, but if there is one area where the government seems to have managed so far is in controlling inflation. So far. Perhaps well aware of how rising inflation had turned out to be a politically challenging issue for the UPA. During much of UPA 2, inflation was on the up, over 10%. Falling after the Modi government came to power, but now for the first time, it's climbing back up. One of the reasons it was under control is because in March of 2016, the Modi government amended the RBI Act, which entails the RBI to ensure inflation would remain between 2 to 6%. But this 6% threshold has now been breached for the first time since 2014. The two main reasons for this appear to be a massive spike in edible oil prices as well as an increase in fuel prices. Edible oil prices are up across the board, almost 50% uh, for sunflower oil, vanaspati, soya, palm, mustard. They're all up on an average about 40% increase in edible oil prices. That's because international prices for these oils are rising and India meets more than half of its domestic demand through imports. The government has cut import duties on edible oils, which has brought prices down a bit, but still it is worrisome. Also stoking inflation are rising prices of fuel, which have risen by close to 20% in the last six months in a city like Delhi. The government, states and centre can bring down fuel prices by reducing fuel taxes, but that's not happened yet. In fact, the central government appears to have increased excise duties on fuel to earn more money, perhaps, in this cash-strapped time of the pandemic. All right, let me go uh, first straight across to P. Chidambaram, uh, senior leader of the Congress party, as well as former uh, finance minister. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Chidambaram, uh, for joining us on the show. Now, you have uh, led the Congress charge, as it were, against the government for not being able to control inflation. But if the government were to turn around and say, look, these are because of external factors, not in our hands, like edible oil prices, for instance, which are rising around the world. So how can you fault us for that? These are not external factors. But taxes on petrol, taxes on diesel mm -hmm. are not external factors. I have mentioned the numbers in my opening statement yesterday. When crude oil prices were $125 a barrel, we were able to give petrol. The UPA government is able to give petrol at uh, 65 rupees and 45 rupees respectively. Sure. Why is it so high? It is because there is a 33 rupee cess on petrol mm. and a 32 rupee cess on diesel, which is not an external factor. Okay. It's entirely the government's doing of levying a cess and collecting something like 4 lakh 20,000 crore rupees every year. So okay. how do you blame external factors? Okay, so I'll come to fuel in a second, but edible oil? Edible oil, yes. Edible oil prices are rising. But why are you imposing a huge import duty on edible oils? Mm. You should reduce the import duty on edible oil and lower prices. I think on oils and fats, mm. inflation is 34.78%. Right. Look at the customs duty on edible oil. Look at the customs duty on soybean oil, on palm oil. Okay. I mentioned this in my statement that you have high customs duty on um, palm oil, mm -hmm. pulse, and other household items. Reduce the import duties and prices will come down. To the, to the argument that could be made uh, that at a time when the government is cash-strapped, revenues are generally down, uh, we, need to, we need these cesses, we need this additional taxes to make money, uh, you would say what? I don't agree. Year before last, in the first pandemic year, you gave away 1,45,000 crore as tax rebate to the corporate sector. And today, the newspapers have reported the amount of loans that have been written off for the corporate sector. Between 1920 and 2021, mm -hmm. they have written off 4.5 lakh crore loans. And in the previous year, and in the previous year, they wrote off another one and a half lakh crore and two lakh crore. Sure. So you're giving huge bonanzas to the corporate sector. 
by way of write-off of loan, by way of tax concessions, tax rebate. Why are you doing that? If you need money, mm -hmm. you should tap the rich. You should tap the corporate sector. Well, hold on. Today, this, yeah. Mr. Chidambaram, hold on. Uh, yes. You know, as you, as you know, that huge write-offs to corporate sector is not necessarily new. This is something that we've been seeing happen over the years. Uh, but overall, in, in, in this scenario, were you to be the finance minister and confronted with rising, you know, global crude prices, rising edible oil prices, and, and the pandemic restrictions on, on how much revenue you're earning, what would you have done in the government's so, place? Three things. Firstly, I'll reduce the cess on petrol and diesel. And as other revenues increase, mm. I will further reduce the cess. Cess is a very bad tax. Cesses are imposed for a specific purpose, for a specific period. Here, cesses become a permanent feature of the BJP NDA taxation policy. Second, I will reduce the import duties hmm. on essential goods like palm oil, pulses, and some other household items. Okay. Thirdly, I would reduce the GST rates okay. on a large number of items which today suffer 12% or 18% GST rate. These include toothpaste, toiletries, processed food, other items, home appliances. So there okay. are ways in which you can give relief to the poor, especially in a pandemic year hmm. when they have lost jobs, they have lost incomes, they have lost wages, hmm. they are in acute distress. This is the time to give relief. Now, you would do this, but then you would take a revenue hit. Would that not? Yes. Be, would, and, but then how? How would you, you know, spend money, which also is important at a time like this? But the fiscal deficit is no concern in a pandemic year. We have repeatedly said that. Hmm. Instead, fiscal deficit cannot be a constraint. Even right. as conservative, even as conservative as a central banker like Dr. Rangarajan has said, fiscal deficit is not a concern today. You must increase your fiscal deficit. Okay. So you would not worry about uh, ratings, downgrades and all of that at a time like this, um, which, which I know that you've said before. But... Mr. Chidambaram, you also said, because the other argument, of course, is that petrol prices, fuel prices are also pushed up because of state taxes as well, and there are several non-BJP states which have high taxes. You've said that that's not realistic to expect states to lower taxes at a time like this because there is a problem with revenue sharing with the center, especially given how GST revenues are being shared or not shared. There's almost, I think, as you put it, a breakdown. So, so that's, is that not an option at all then, for states to consider reducing taxes? Let's, let's get the facts straight. There is a central excise duty. There are state excise duties on petrol and diesel. And there is a cess. The central excise duty exceeds the state's excise duty. That's a sure. fact. Let us assume for the time being, that center requires some revenue, hmm. states require some revenue. Therefore, they are allowed to impose some excess, excise duty. Let's assume that each one cancels the other. But what about the cesses? In the price today that you paid this morning, hmm. 101 hmm. rupees for petrol, hmm. 33 rupees, one third is assessed. Hmm. In diesel, when you pay 95 rupees, 32 rupees is assessed. Okay. That is entirely the central government. The state government does not impose any cess. It cannot impose any cess. Entry 97 of list 1 is available only to the central government. So why do you not reduce the cesses? Okay. Keep, your, keep your central excise duty. Let the states keep their state excise duty. Okay. But reduce the cesses. Okay, so you're, you're, on the, you're particularly on the cess, which you say is inordinately yes. high. But, but, but coming back to this this kind of breakdown of trust between the center and the states when it comes to revenue sharing, which is another reason you cited saying this is not, a, this is not the right time to bring fuel uh, yes. under the GST. But you're saying that 
were there not to have been that breakdown, or if that gets resolved with those trust factors, then it's okay, is it, to bring fuel prices under GST? That's the idea. That's the intention, that all products must come under GST, including petroleum products. In fact, the constitutional provision allows for other items which are kept out for the time being to be mm. brought under GST. And I am on record as saying that petroleum products must eventually be brought under GST. But given the complete trust deficit, mm. the states don't uh, trust the center at all to distribute the GST compensation fairly and to provide for GST compensation to be collected and given to the states. Where is the question of bringing anything more under the GST? The present but, GST system is on the verge of collapse now. But, but to the point, to the centers, I mean, I'm not saying necessarily they're making this argument, but were they to make the argument that, look, we don't have enough money, we don't have enough revenues to, to distribute, to meet the commitments. Uh, That's not correct. Is that what, they have collected, what they have collected, they have not distributed. There are areas. Hmm. The union finance ministers admitted there are areas, and the areas will be paid. And I put out a tweet giving the areas for Punjab, Chhattisgarh, and Rajasthan, as on the 30th of June, nobody has contradicted me. I collected it from the states and put out the numbers of areas of these three states. I also have the areas of Kerala and right. Tamil Nadu, but I did not want to take responsibility for putting that out. Okay. In conclusion, though, are you beginning to see some signs of any kind of turnaround that inflation is cooling off a bit and that it, we, you know, we might be seeing some kind of stabilization? I don't think so. 6.3 to 6.26 is statistically insignificant. The real issue is the inflation in pulses, mm. fruit, right. transport, fuel and light, oil and fats. Okay. That fruits may cool down. But it is the petrol and diesel which is driving transport inflation. Okay. LPG, which is driving fuel and light inflation. Right. Oil and fats is largely imported or substantially imported mm. and the customs duties are driving that inflation. Unless the government does something about petrol, diesel, LPG and imported oils. Right. I don't, you can't see these high numbers like 11.56 and 12.68 and 34.78 cooling down. I don't see that happening. Okay, absolutely. Last question to you. Uh, if the government were to argue that, look, you have some, you know, a lot of advice to give on managing inflation, but under the, particularly under UPA2, uh, your government couldn't, and inflation was all over the place. Inflation was all over the place when someone else was in charge of finance. Go back and look at the years. But it was I still your government, sir. I agree. I take collective responsibility. If you think I, sh I, I take collective responsibility, I have no doubt about it. I have no hesitation in admitting that. Right. But then we did bring inflation under control in 2012 to 13. So there are ways in which inflation can be brought under control. Okay. But if I'm, if I'm a... Um, um, Persona non grata, don't ask me for my advice. I give you my advice. Don't take my advice. Hmm. Take the advice of your own economists and let's see what you do about okay. inflation and recovery. All right. P. Chitambaram, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.